Something fairly similar to a while loop is a for loop. And this one works in a somewhat similar way. We are still running code a certain amount of time. So we are basically repeating code. The difference now is that we are running code for every item inside of a container. This could, for example, look something like this. We want to run a for loop for every item inside of the list that contains one, two, and three. The way this works is that Python goes through this entire list and picks every single value, one, two, and three here. And then for each cycle, it assigns the value to the X in this case, but you could name it whatever you want. Meaning if you added something like a print inside of this for loop, you would print one, two, and three. Four cycles over every single item in the list, and then it stores the value inside of X and you can treat it like a variable. And just like with while, you can also use break and continue. And that is basically it. Let's have a look at it. I want to create, let me call it a basic list. And here, let's use the example. I have a list with the numbers one, two, and three. And I want to run a for loop to access every single item of this list. The example we have used is 4x in basic list. And then inside of it, we have printed x. If I run this now, we are getting 1, 2, and 3. So what happened here? I think it actually makes kind of sense. Python is going to run this block of code here for every item inside of this list. And on every cycle, it picks one of the values starting from 1 then two and then three. And it always assigns this item to the variable we have specified here. But you could use any Python variable name. And then inside of the for loop, we are doing something with that value. Right now, we're just printing it. We could also add it to a list or doing some math operations or really do whatever we want. And that way we can run code for every item inside of a list. And this would also work with the other types of containers like a tuple, a dictionary, or a set. As a matter of fact, there are lots of different things you could be cycling over. For example, a string would also work inside of a for loop. And there's one particular case I do want to cover if you want to cycle over a number. This would also work, but it does need some adjustment. Let's actually play around with all of this. And I have pre-written some values, these ones here. We have a basic tuple, a basic dictionary, a basic set, a basic string and a basic number. Tuples and sets work exactly like the list. If I replace the basic list with a basic tuple, we get the very same outcome and we would also get the same thing with a set. There we go. We always get one, two and three. Python just really doesn't care what kind of container you have. It's fine cycling over any of them. A basic dictionary also works, but it looks a bit different in terms of what you get. Let me paste it in here, basic dict. And now we are still getting one, two, and three. We are getting all of the keys, which if you cycle over a dictionary is probably not what you want to do. The way around it is you would use either values to get the values. Now we get one, two, and three, the strings attached to each key, or we would use items. And that way you're getting a tuple returned with the key and the value. We are going to learn later on how to work with dictionaries in a bit more detail. But for now, I think this is all we are going to need. For a basic string, we can just paste it in here. And now Python takes the string apart and gives us every individual letter, including the space. Finally, we have a basic number. And this right now is not going to work. If I run it, we get a type error, int object is not iterable. Let's talk about why this one didn't work. To loop over a number, so the operation we have seen was for x and three, and this one didn't work. The reason it didn't work is because Python needs some kind of iterable and integers cannot be iterated over. That being said, iterating from zero to a certain number is such a common operation that there's a specific Python function for it. It is called range. 
how you would use that is you would add a number in it and then it creates a range object. If you use something like range free, we would get a range object from zero and then all the way to three. And this we can iterate over. It's fairly similar to a list, although it is its own data type. Meaning if you want to iterate over a number, you would use for x in range and then the number. And I guess let's implement this one as well. Here we are back in the example. And instead of using the number, I have to put the number inside of the range function. If I print this now, we are getting the numbers 0, 1, and 2, which if you pay close attention is kind of different from these numbers here. We are not even getting 3. We are again starting at 0 and then going all the way to 3, but we are not including 3. And this is why we are getting 2. A better way of illustrating this, let me copy this and comment out this entire for loop and just print the range object. Running this gets me a range object from 0 to 3. It very much is its own data type. And this one simply gives us something we can loop over and it starts from 0 and goes all the way to a number we specified, but it doesn't include it. Which granted is a bit confusing to read. The range function actually works very similar compared to slicing because inside of range right now we only specified one value which was the end point but you could specify up to three values in here you could have the start the end and the step size for the values start by default is going to be zero and the step size is always going to be one meaning if we don't specify them we are getting those values most of the time you are only specifying the end value, which is what we have done ourselves. But in here, you could specify something like 10, let's say 20 and two. If I run this now, we are getting a range object from 10, 20 and a step size of two, which by itself isn't particularly useful. But if I cut all of this out, get rid of this print statement, and uncomment this for loop. And now I want my range object to look like this. If I run it now, we get only the even values from 10 to 20. And again, we are not including 20. But that is essentially the for loop. It is very often used alongside the range function. They are very much connected to each other. And I guess with that, let's do an exercise once more. And what I want you guys to do is this one here. And this list contains other lists. These are nested lists. You are supposed to cycle through this entire list using a for loop and then only print the numbers below 50. Although skip the values below 10. As a tip here, you will need one for loop to go through this list and then another nested for loop to go through each individual list inside of this list. Finally, I want you guys to break this for loop if any value is above 100, which is the case here. For this one, you are going to need a for loop inside of a for loop and also throw an if statement in there somewhere. See if you can figure this one out yourself. All right, let's do it together now. First of all, I need for, and now I need a good name. And since I know that each of these lists here are nested inside of this practice list, I want something like for nested list inside of my practice list. Meaning I'm looking at this practice list here and I'm cycling over this entire list. What I'm getting from that is going to be, let me print the nested list. I am getting these three lists here. We still get the earlier results. Let me comment out all of this to make all of this a bit cleaner. There we go. Now we have a couple of lists with numbers inside of them. Problem is, this still doesn't help us figure out individual values. For example, I want to print this 10 here, but right now I can't access it because it's inside of a list. 
to overcome that, we are going to need another for loop with for, let me call it value inside of the nested list. And now if I print this value and let me comment out printing the nested list, that's gonna get confusing. If I run this now, I am getting all of the numbers. Basically what happens here, let me use different colors for this. The first for loop, this one here, is going to go through this entire list and it is looking at every item. And an item is counted at anything separated by a comma, meaning this is one item, this is another item, and this is the final item. Python doesn't care if the item is a list or a number, it treats all of them the same. And to access every value inside of this nested list, we have this second for loop here. And this one is going to go for every individual list. It starts with this one, then it does this one, and then this one. And via this for loop, we are going through every individual value inside of the list, or the nested list to be more specific. The result being that this value here is going to be every individual value from all of the lists. And this is what we are printing. That is a really good start. So now we have to cover that we only want to print the numbers below 50 and we want to skip values that are below 10. I guess we can start with if the value is below 50, only then do we want to print the entire value. Let me run this now and we are only getting values below 50. This is going to cover the entire first line. Now we have to cover the part to skip if a value is below 10. And this again, we could either do by adding an end here, or we could add another if statement inside of here. I guess I'm gonna stick with the if statement inside of here, although it really doesn't matter. I want to skip the values if we are below 10, meaning if, the value is below 10, then I want to use continue. If this is the case, we are stopping this entire cycle and we are not getting to the print value. So let's try this. And indeed, we are only getting values that are at least 10 and the values two and four we have skipped. Now, finally, we have to cover the last part, that I want to end this entire for loop if we get a value above 100, which is going to be this one here. And now you might be very tempted to add something like if value is greater than 100, then I want to break this entire code, or at the very least the for loop. However, now this is not going to work. I guess to demonstrate it, the last value after 101 is going to be this 10 here. And since this is not below 10, we do expect this to run. Although I just realized that since we have a 10 here and the 10 here, it might be a bit hard to see. Let me change the name here to a 12, so we have a specific number. If I run the code now, we still can see the 12. And I would recommend you to look over this and see why we can still see a 12. The error here is because of one of the if statements. Try to have a look for it. The error happened on this line here. This if statement checks if the value is below 50, meaning we are never getting a value above that 50. As a consequence, when we are getting to this line here, if value is above 100, this line doesn't even run because we never get to it. After this line here, we are only getting values below 50. So this line here is essentially pointless. We can, however, cut it out and paste it at the top of, of the inner for loop. Let me fix this one. Now, when we are looking inside of this for loop, if you find any value above 100, we are breaking the entire thing and none of this would run. I guess, let me run it. And now the last value is 10, this 10 here. 
This does look confusing, especially if you're just starting to program, but if you get used to indentation here, this should eventually make more and more sense. This is definitely something you want to practice in your own time even more. When it comes to Python and the flow of the code, understanding indentation is really important to understand what's going on.